the other theme uh, we focus on this podcast, uh, Sukhinder, is about how people make work choices and life choices. In in mm-hmm. one of the sections of the book, you speak about uh, you negotiate. You use the term negotiations with your husband about having a third child while wanting to be mm-hmm. a tech company CEO. Mm-hmm. I guess asking a broader question: How have you thought about some of your choices around work and your family life, especially around maternity, which I find to be a point of leakage in the mm-hmm. in the in the pipeline of the women rising to the yeah. top? Yeah. So, how how have you thought about that at various points in time? Well, I think that maybe the way I've thought about it, that in hindsight, I realize is different than a lot of women or other leaders mm-hmm. that I didn't necessarily see, but more so women who actually research shows are more risk averse. Like there is research to support that, you know, mm-hmm. that claim. Um, I guess I have never thought of it things as binary and therein has been my ability to get through. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So I've never thought it's all work. It's all home. If I make a mm-hmm. choice for this, it's a choice against this, by the way. There's sacrifices all around. I always say someone is unhappy with me. So that is absolutely true. <laughs> What's absolutely true is there's no balance. Somebody is always getting disappointed. My family mm. is like, you put so much energy into work. My, you know, people at work might be like, what? You're not available at this time because you're going to your daughter's water polo game. Like, I need more of you. And I'm like, well, there's only so much. Um, so it is true that you get fairly, um, you know, uh, used to the fact that you're always disappointing someone and thus there's some guilt there. But that aside, I think the key for me has always been like, don't presume something is impossible unless you first fully negotiate it at home or at work. And so, mm. because when women say it's not possible, and by the way, that doesn't mean you have to want it. Like there are severe trade-offs you make. So I'm not the person to say to women, you have to want it, this lifestyle. I know that's not what I'm mm. saying. But I'm saying if mm. you want it, don't presume it's not possible until you negotiate to the nth degree what is possible. So get it to the best possible state through negotiation, as opposed to saying, I opt out. Because when you opt out without having a conversation, you don't know what's possible. So um, you may or may not be familiar. When I was at Google, I was, I got married late. So I was 34 when I got married, not late in today's era, but for an Indian woman, late. <laughs> um, but certainly by the time I got married, I was senior at Google. But by the time I had, I was pregnant with my first child, which was 35, I was already, you know, very senior and I was running APAC and LATAM. Mm. And I thought, how can I possibly do this? But I really want to stay in this job. I'm just getting started. So I went to Google and I said, I would like you to pay for my nanny and my daughter to travel with me around the world. This is how I stay in this job. And to their credit, Mm. they said yes. They looked at the opportunity cost of losing me. By the way, not an ideal choice. My husband was left at home alone for ages, but better than giving up my job, better than my daughter being at home without me and being a mother who is like absent all the time, right? So he got the shortest end of the stick. We were all gone for weeks at a time, you know, two weeks at a time, the house would be empty because my daughter and I and the nanny were gone. But at least we were together as a unit when she was a newborn. Um, But I didn't know that was possible. Like that was something I brainstormed at home and took to work. And then the converse is also true, as we talked about, like later in my career, I wanted to be a tech CEO. And My husband thought, like, how do we have time for a third child? And we spent a year talking about how to have a third child because I also said, you know, not having a third child will be one of the biggest regrets of my lifetime. Like, I can't imagine it. So let's just keep talking it through until we get to a compromise where it's possible. And then we architected the support Mm -hmm. we would need to make it possible. 